My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable two-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty dinners using everyday ingredients. So for dinner tonight, we are having grilled steaks. My parents bought, I think like a half a cow or a quarter of a cow or something like that. And they gave us a bunch of meat, and they, which included some T-bone steaks. So Howard grilled some steaks for us. So this is my plate. And I also made some baked potatoes in the air fryer. So on my potato, I've got salt, pepper, and butter and sour cream. And then we have still had some lettuce left over from the other day, so I just made a little side salad. And then um, those are Parmesan cheese crisp on top of the salad that I just kind of crushed up a little bit. And then this is Howard's plate, and on his potato, he just has butter and sour cream. And um, here's the other salad. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are eating from our pantry. I am using this fajita rice bowl with Mexican rice from Kinders or Kinders, I'm not sure. Um, but I got this maybe a month or so ago, probably longer than that, from Walmart. And it comes with the meat seasoning and then it also comes with the rice mix. So here are our bowls. Um, so on the bottom of our bowls, we have some lettuce and then we've got the rice as you can see right there, and then meat, cheese, and salsa. This one is my bowl, and then this is Howard's bowl. Same thing, except he has avocado and sour cream. So as far as the meat, we both really like the meat. It has a great flavor. Neither one of us care for the Mexican rice. It really doesn't have a lot of flavor, and it just tastes like chili powder. It's not good at all. Hopefully, once we get everything all combined, it'll taste a lot better. Um, but anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Okay, so we are eating from our freezer tonight. I made this tempura shrimp, and it is from Costco. Um, it was in my freezer, and so I'm trying it out for the first time tonight. I heard a lot of good things about this shrimp, and it had been out at my store for a long time, and then I recently, well not recently, it's been a couple of months ago, found it. And uh, I just baked it in the air fryer. And then with it, I am serving some shells and white cheddar pasta, and then some frozen corn that I had in the, in the freezer. I actually had two half open bags of corn, so I just made them both and added some butter and salt to it. And so this is the pasta that I'm using. It's from Aldi, I'm trying this out for the first time tonight. And then the shrimp actually comes with a dipping sauce. It has a bunch of different packages of dipping sauce. And so I just made one for us. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So I'm trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. It is cheesy shrimp tortellini. So in my skillet, I have some butter, I have garlic, I have basil, and I just added in my shrimp. I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description bo box. I'm not following it exactly. The recipe actually calls for Roma tomatoes, which I don't have, I'm leaving that out. And I'm also going to be adding in some Cajun seasoning. So I'm just sprinkling that on. The recipe doesn't call for that either. And I'm using the uh, Tony Sassery, that's my favorite. So I'm just gonna let this cook up and then I'll be back. Okay, now that my shrimp is cooked, it says to stir in a little bit of flour and make sure that it's completely combined. And then add in your heavy whipping cream and your cheese. And I'm adding in more cheese than the recipe calls for and I'm using Parmesan cheese. And I'm just gonna let this melt. So now I'm adding in about a pound of cooked cheese tortellini, and I'm just gonna stir it well and get it all combined. Okay, so here's our dinner, and it is actually pretty tasty. I like it, I definitely make it again. I did not feel like making a green vegetable tonight, so we are not having one, but I am serving it with breadsticks. And I am using these breadsticks from, or I made these breadsticks from a great value, these garlic breadsticks, and they're pretty good. I think it's $2 a box, and you get six breadsticks in there, and I just pop them in the air fryer. 
So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So I am trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. Of course, I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. It is oven, no, 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 I'm sorry. Buttermilk oven roasted chicken. And so in my large bowl here, I have about two pounds of um, legs and thighs. The original recipe called for breast, but we prefer legs and thighs. And um, there is buttermilk in here, salt, pepper, there's garlic, there is um, fresh parsley as well. And so this mixture has been marinating in the refrigerator for 48 hours. That's what the recipe calls for. It's supposed to give you a really tender, juicy chicken. So I'm getting ready to take this out of the liquid and put it on a nine by 13 baking pan. I'm gonna bake it at 400 degrees for about 45 to 50 minutes. So I am making some mashed potatoes to go along with our dinner tonight. And I know I have done this before on our channel, but I just don't remember which video it was. But in my pot, I have um, about a little over two pounds of potatoes that I um, salted and boiled and then I just drained. I just added in a little more than a half a stick of unsalted butter. And now I am pouring in some um, half and half that I warmed up so it's not ice cold. I warmed it up in the microwave. And now I'm just going to use my handy dandy potato masher and I'm just gonna mash up my potatoes and then you're just gonna salt and pepper them to taste. But easy peasy mashed potatoes. Okay, so here is the buttermilk chicken. I ended up baking it longer than the direction said because this chicken was really big. So for probably about an hour and 15 minutes, Howard and I tasted it and we both said we don't think it was worth all the prep work, the two days in the fridge wasn't worth it. It doesn't taste any more tender than it would have had I just baked it like I normally would bake my chicken. But it's pretty good, but I probably would not make it again. And of course I'm serving my homemade mashed potatoes with it. So this time I made it with half and half, just trying to eat better. But normally I make my mashed potatoes with heavy whipping cream and they are so good. And then I'm just serving it with um, also some canned green beans that I added some bacon to and um, seasoned salt and so forth. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time.